uh, <coughs> next postulate would be the Schrodinger equation. And this is the equation that will keep coming back to uh, as we continue with this course. So let's talk about the Schrodinger equation. Let's in our numbering system here. This is the sixth postulate. So postulate number six, the Schrodinger equation. The state function psi, okay, evolves over time. Remember, we said psi is a function of coordinates and time, right? So this postulate says that the state function evolves over time, so it changes with time, okay, according to this equation. It is called the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. So it, uh, it must obey this equation. So what is this equation? It's I h bar derivative, uh, partial derivative of psi with respect to time is equal to h hat psi. And what is h hat? That's your Hamiltonian operator. That's the operator corresponding to the sum of the kinetic energy operator and the potential energy operator. Okay, so that's one equation, one of the most basic equations that you need to know by heart. Okay, so that's your time dependent Schrodinger equation. Now, <clears throat> We're going to focus on what are known as stationary states, <coughs> case, which we'll get in cases where the Hamiltonian operator, or more specifically, the potential energy part of the Hamiltonian operator, is independent of time. If you remember, what's a kinetic energy operator? Negative h bar squared over 2m, right? And then the sum of second derivatives, right? Derivative with respect to x, derivative with respect to y, derivative with respect to z, second derivative with respect to z. This is for a one particle system, right? So you can see there is no time dependence in your kinetic energy operator. Okay, so the part of the Hamiltonian operator that could depend on time is the potential energy. Now, if that potential energy part does not depend on time, then it's possible to have what we know, what are known as stationary states. Okay, so if your Hamiltonian is independent of time, then you can show that there are solutions to your Schrodinger equation that can be written up the, in this form. Not all solutions can be written in this form, but there are solutions. There's a set of solutions that you can write in this form right here. And which, what, what do we mean by this form? Uh, wave function, your state function, is a function of coordinates and time, right? Now, we can write that if, it's, if, if you have a stationary state, a stationary state is defined as one that can be written as a function of coordinate times a function of time. We say that coordinates and time are separable. You can separate these two variables, basically. Okay? So, not every function can be written as a function of coordinates times a function of time. Let me just illustrate that with something very simple, not necessarily um, this. Let's say I have something like x squared plus x plus 1 times 2t. See, you can see that's a function of x times a function of time, right? But if I were to write something like uh, xt squared plus x squared t, can I write that as of something that just depends on x and something that just depends on y? Okay, let's see if we can factor out x, t, and what do we have? t plus x. Can you separate that? Something that depends on time, something that depends on x? No, right? So we're only interested we're going to be interested in cases where we can write our wave function as a function of coordinates, function of x, y, and z, times a function of time. Okay? Those types of wave functions are called stationary states. Right. So, uh, let's go back here. So, there are solutions to the Schrodinger equation that can be written this way. And if that is the case, it's very easy to show that the part that depends on time is just this expression right here. 
e to my to the negative i e t over h bar. So this is e to the negative i e t over h bar, where e is a constant. Okay. And this e right here is the same constant you get if you apply the Hamiltonian on little psi. Make the distinction here. This is capital psi. Okay function of coordinates and time. We're writing it as a function only of coordinates, so the part that depends only on coordinates, we're using lowercase psi. So uppercase psi, lowercase psi. All right. So when you put that, that becomes uppercase. Okay. So anyway, this E turns out to be the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian operator. So we can identify E then as the energy. If we measure the energy of that system, that's the, and it happens to be in a stationary state, okay, we're going to get a well-defined energy. So in other words, a stationary state is one that has a well-defined energy, where your wave function is an eigenfunction of your Hamiltonian operator. We can also show in this particular case that h hat big psi is equal to e hat e times big psi. Okay, so stationary states are states that they are described by a wave function which is associated with a well-defined energy. These are wave functions that you can write as a function of coordinates times a function of time, and the function of time is written this way. Okay, now this h hat psi equals e psi is what we'll be using throughout the rest, pretty much the rest of the course, because we already know the part that depends on time. We're only going to be looking at stationary states. Okay, and you might ask, why not make it general? Well, because Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator, right? So any other state, you can just write as a linear combination of the stationary states. So if you have, like I said, if you have a stationary state, if I put an SS here for stationary state, that's, uh, those stationary states are eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator. So they form a complete set. So any other state function, any other psi, can just be written as a linear combination of these stationary states. So why are we interested in stationary states? If we leave the system alone, we'll have a constant well-defined energy. Okay, so these are systems with well-defined energy, and ultimately that allows us to, uh, well, by solving these station for these stationary states, we determine what the allowed energies are for the system. And why are we interested in knowing what the allowed energies are for the system? Because we can verify the validity of our theoretical predictions, the predictions of quantum mechanics, by spectroscopy. Remember, delta E, the Bohr frequency condition, the change in the energy of a system is equal to H times the frequency of the photon that is either absorbed or released when it undergoes that energy change. So spectroscopy then is the experimental verification on the predictions of quantum mechanics. Okay, so we're going to look at those, we're going to look at some very simple systems and then for your next Test, and then after that, we're going to look at atoms and molecules. So, for a stationary state, prove that the probability density function is independent of time. Uh, actually, I guess I skipped the, the I'm, I'm missing a slide. All right, let's go back to here, uh, this one right here. How do we show this part because we're going to see this separation of variables a lot throughout the course so let's go ahead and do it here okay so let's prove this expression right here that if this is the case then we can write that and that okay so those are conclusions so we assume that big psi is equal to little psi times function of time okay so let's apply that to our Let's plug that into our time dependent Schrodinger equation. Okay, so this one, I h hat, I h bar d psi d t equals h psi, okay? 
So I, H bar, partial derivative of big psi dt is equal to e, H hat psi. So let's substitute. I'm going to say I H bar derivative, partial derivative with respect to time. I'm going to write little psi times F, okay, equals H hat times uh, operating on little psi times F. Now, I'm taking the derivative on this left-hand side with respect to time. Now, psi, little psi, does not depend on time, right? So as far as this derivative is concerned, this little psi is a constant. The variable here is time. So I can factor that out. I can move that out of my derivative. So this is going to be I h bar little psi times partial derivative of f with respect to time equals the Hamiltonian operator we say this is true we say if the Hamiltonian does not affect time right it's independent of time so as far as this Hamiltonian is concerned in this particular case f this f right here is independent of time Okay, so that's a constant. It only affects coordinates, right? Expressions that depend on the coordinates. So I can move out my my f as a constant. So I'm going to say f times h hat psi, little psi now. Okay, you still with me? All right. Now I'm going to separate my variables. I'm going to move everything that depends on time on one side and everything that depends only on coordinates on the other side. So I'm going to divide this by psi times f. I'm going to divide this by psi times f. Up. All right. So what happens? Psi cancels out on this side. Right? And what happens on this other side? F cancels out. Now, the psi up here is not going to cancel the psi down there because that is not h times psi. That's h having, that's all, that's this h hat psi, that's an entire function, okay? That's a transformed psi, okay? So, what do I have now? I h bar partial derivative of f, okay, with respect to time over f is equal to h hat psi over psi. Okay. Now, if the equation is obeyed, we say here's one side that depends only on time, right? It's an expression that might have time in it, right? And here's an expression that has, that will have coordinates only, right? only on q and this one's only on t q is coordinates so it's time how can one say one side that depends only on time be equal to another side that depends only on coordinates in other words it doesn't matter what time it is it doesn't matter what coordinates you have on the other side those two sides are always equal how can functions of two different variables be equal how can an expression that depends on one variable be equal to an expression that depends on another variable? Then it must be that both expressions must be equal to a constant. Right? So what we're saying is, whatever these expressions are, this left side must be equal to a constant, and that right side must be equal to the same constant. And we're going to call that constant E for reasons that will become obvious. So that constant is E. So we're going to say now that, so this left-hand side is I H bar DF, and I'm going to take the partial derivative now since I only have one variable there. So I H bar over F, DF DT is equal to E. That's your left-hand side. 
And your right hand side is h hat psi over psi is equal to e. And remember we said that these are the consequences of the Hamiltonian being not dependent on time. And if psi happens to be a function of coordinates times a function of time. But what is this one right here? How do you solve for that? Ef dt, let me rearrange that, is equal to f uh, e times f over i h bar. Okay. And I'm going to move the t on to the other side, so df and f on the left side. So df over f equals, and I'm going to move that i up on the top, so it's going to be negative i, e over h bar, okay? So this is just negative i, e over h bar, and then dt I'm going to move to the right. Okay, so I'm moving my f down here and my dt over there. Okay, what you have here is called a differential equation. You integrate both sides, you get the you get the function. So if we integrate both sides, what's integral of df over f? Ln of f. And ie over h bar is a constant. I can pull it out. Minus ie over h bar. What is the integral of t? dt is t. Plus an integration constant. We'll combine the integration constant from both sides. We'll just have one integration constant. Okay. So can I simplify this? I can say this is this is log to the base e, right? So e to the negative i e t over h bar is equal to f. Okay. Take the inverse log of both sides times e to the c. Now, e to the c is just another constant. We're just going to take that as 1, okay? It's, it's an arbitrary constant. Uh, ultimately, the whole expression is going to have to be multiplied by a constant so that it's normalized. So we're just going to take that as, uh, for, sim for simplicity, we'll just take that as 1. So our function of time is just e to the negative i e t over h bar. Okay, and what's the other equation we have to solve? So we know the part that depends on time. So the only part that we really need to solve from here on is just this part right here. If we're only interested in stationary state, I can rearrange this to say h hat little psi equals e times little psi. This is the time independent Schrodinger equation. Okay, the other one that you saw earlier, that's a time dependent Schrodinger equation time dependent, and then this one, h hat psi equals e psi, that is your time independent Schrodinger equation. Okay? So, how much time do I have? That's it? Okay, we'll continue this next time. So, one more lecture.